All right, guys. Welcome to Game Freaks versus Team Dynamics. We are in the inaugural official opening of of uh, Nexus Gaming Series. So hopefully you're all excited. This is a Division A series. Uh, there actually were matches last night, but technically those were exceptions. And this is the official start of Nexus Gaming Series. So, uh, just some tidbits before we get started. Uh, some some interesting facts about both teams. Uh, so for Team Dynamics, what's actually kind of neat is that Raven X and uh, Death were both actually playing on Division C teams. So they're they've made a big upgrade in their skill and have now started or have been joined. A division A team, so this should be a significant step up in terms of competition for them. Um, uh, Raven X actually made the All Star team for Division C, as long with uh, his team making the uh, the playoffs. On the side of Game Freaks, uh, they've been a around for a while now, and and they've they've been doing some role swapping um and finally they may have actually been able to settle into their their roles with the pickup of bernie burn coming in on in as a healer for them and they also now have infofox filling in as a tank and let's see if uh these newfound roles for the team is actually going to work out for them they do not have their their actual captain playing tonight but that shouldn't matter um i hope that both both teams are able to play to their own expectations and you know really put forth a great game we've already got our map bands uh done and ready to go so very first game in this series is actually going to be a in infernal shrines so if you don't know the rules for our nexus gaming series uh it's it's actually just a best of two it's no best of three and the way it works is if you win both games you earn an extra point in the series and it becomes a three point win versus if you take only one game it's only worth one point so the goal is obviously to get what's considered a domination getting a domination that you uh, two additional points or technically one more than a normal uh, normal win. So the map picks first one chosen by Raven X is Infernal Shrine and Medivh will be the yeah, ban. I'm I'm pretty certain that Phoenix is open if I recall and I wouldn't be surprised if he's immediately banned. At this point he's pretty much 100% uh, broken. We, we can say that without a doubt and Medivh is a super solid hero like you you don't even need to play him at optimal levels i feel like anymore just because his circle of protection and his force of wills are just really high value now especially with the changes that they made for him now obviously he's much better in the hands of a skilled player so there's there's the phoenix band as expected um now there's a lot of different picks uh in NA, it's became, it has just become, I suppose, like very pre prevalent, the Jaina pickup. If you've been watching, uh, for instance, HEC Open, King's Gambit has basically turned the Garage and Jaina into some huge powerhouse picks for good reason. They combo really well. Uh, you take away someone who's actually strong against him because if you can kite, kite him, he can't really come at you, slow you with his Q and then throw over his shoulder now etc strong pickup you have hanzo who's insanely strong pickup uh genji Urian, stukov all these are strong picks now for our very first pick that's that's entirely another thing um 
So we're going to get Stukov as the first pick. He's great on trines because he's able to provide a lot of zone denial. He can either provide zone denial or he can get some really solid picks with the most common build being his uh, weighted push rolls, explosion into his silence, creating the root, which he picks up come 13. So it's not, it's not a very late game build. And on top of that, you don't even really need that once you have the extra large size, which you pick up at level one. And then once you get the additional range, he, he's basically dropping silences in the safety of his his core uh, while the rest of the team is suffering through it. Now, on the other side, we can still see any of those picks I mentioned picked up. The thing with Stukov is that he's good at burst healing. He's not very good with sustained damage. He's able to burst it, but then he has a long cooldown that he has to contend with. And so we're going to actually see the Hanzo pick up here from Dynamics and the Garage. So I like the Garage pickup. He's powerful. Uh, he's great against like immobile heroes. So Stukov is super immobile. And if a Garage gets actually onto him or Stukov mispositions for any reason, well, that's going to be a dead Stukov. Uh, as outside of the flailing arm or massive shove being taken into account. Now, for the side of game breaks, what do you want to do here? You want to have someone who can prevent Garage from just running at you. You also want to pick a tank that is not going to be bodied by Garage. Uh, someone like a Johanna is actually really good on Infernal Trines to begin with, and she's hard for Garage to deal with in the sense that she can't just be tossed around. She holds her D appropriately and uses it, and all of a sudden, Garage has a minimal target to throw. But Maev was still on the table, and Genji has been picked up as well. This is like a full-on dive team. What's, what's kind of interesting here is that the Warden's Cage into... The silence is probably one of the most brutal combos you can land. But one, because the silence just lasts as long as Stukov sits there. And two, um, it's a lot of damage. So the Genji and Maev are going to be essentially uh, the twin dive team where Maev can get deep into the back, Genji can dive alongside of her, or Maev can go pull in the front line, Genji dives into the back line and causes chaos where someone like Medivh, who's been banned out, is now, um, you know, in a much worse spot. Now, who do you ban here? There's no, no tanks taken. So if you're Team Dynamics, you should start looking for tank bans. The tank bans could be, you know, ETC, Diablo. Uh, there's the Diablo. Um, there's the Johanna. Diablo is good because if he can dive into your Hanzo, overpower him and, and bring him back. Now this is a solid move on the side of Game Freaks. They're gonna they're gonna support choke the team dynamics right now. And you might be thinking like, why would you support choke on on this game or just in general? Well, right now Stukov and Malfurion are considered the two best healers. And additionally, look who they have, Genji. If Genji dives and has to deal with a Malfurion, Malfurion will go in Twilight Dream him, they'll turn on him and try and get him in a taunt. They get him in a taunt, uh, well, he's dead between the Twilight Dream and the taunt. And even Maev has to contend with it to a large degree. You can drop a root in the Warden's cage, cruise around with him, and you also have the ability to kind of like counter that initiation with the Warden's Cage. So <clears throat> we still need a solo laner. There's several different choices available. Uh, you got your Blaze, you got your Mouth Ale, you got your Sonya. You can play um, a less traditional picks as well. Uh, so you can pick up Dahaka if you want some global control. And Dahaka could be okay against have if he can land isolations against Mayev or a Genji even. If you go with Blaze, you can counter the Warden's Cage to some degree 
and the Genji to some degree. I don't know if this Genji player will opt for the Dragon Blade or the X-Strike. X-Strike has become significantly more popular, I'd say, over uh, the past month. And <clears throat> they're opting for Alexstrasza and Blades. Alexstrasza is probably, if you can't get Malfurion and you can't get Stukov, you can consider her then the second best pick. What I like about the Alexstrasza in general is that Alexstrasza, if she's jumped, he can go and or she can go and actually get herself out of the fight with cleansing flame take herself out for a large chunk of it damage and heal because right now team dynamics if they get caught in the cage alex straza if she's not caught in there uses cleansing flame comes on up and is dropping the damage in the center of the cage while the team is fighting so she's do she's actually getting double value she's healing and dealing damage not many many supports will actually do that now the one thing uh is that alex Raza has a very easy target to fight in you see where she's dropping her healing and you can go and go and pick up people and pull them out so the final pickups here are going to be johanna and grayman grayman's actually been um, kind of falling out of the meta almost entirely because of the double warrior setup that often just bodies him and I actually feel like the very same thing will happen in this scenario. However, the Johanna pickup, the Maev, uh, that combination of like being able to pull the people out of the heal, stun them, and pull them again with a Condemn is going to be really powerful. Plus, they have some great wave clear between Maev, Greymane, and Johanna. Now, who's going to be landing in the top lane is probably the Greymane, I'd assume, as that's your, your best solo laner at this point. Now, on the other side, the wave clear for team dynamics is definitely lacking uh, now why is it lacking well hanzo until level four has to, and if he doesn't pick it up uh hanzo is not going to have wave clear without level four stormbow alex straza is slow super slow in comparison to like true wave clear heroes garage is nothing to write home about whatsoever and they're opting for a tychus here now their DPS is going to be um, very easy to dive in, in comparison because Tychus is very minimal range. However, he can heavily, heavily chunk Johanna, but Johanna is also physical armor based hero, if I recall correctly. And that means uh, you, you then have a scenario where Tychus is, minigun is really his value. And his overkill will be enough wave clear for the side of team dynamics. I'm not sure, though, if it'll be enough for them. The Tychus, now, the actual objective, they have a lot of potential control. Alex Straza goes into dragon form. If you're fighting into the dragon, you should lose. If you don't lose, well, then good luck. Uh, you're not going to win the game if you're not winning the team fights with Alexstrasza and Dragon Form on the objective. Hanzo will be able to poke from far away. Tychus will be able to go in Odin and poke from far away. So they actually have a lot of poke from far away when you take into account Odin. Then with the actual Dragon, it's going to be really scary for Game Freaks to fight under that. However, however once Dragon and Odin are down, I feel like Game Freaks have a much uh, stronger, a much stronger game. So, on the left, left, if we know our left from right, on the left, we have Game Freaks. We got Big Wiz on that Genji, Infofox on the Johanna. We got Bernie Burn on Sukov, Mayog on the Mayev, uh, almost a great, a great rhyming scheme there, and Fabre on the Greymane. On the side of Team Dynamics, we got Captain Muramask, on Blaze, we got Summer Ash on the Garage, Darabo on the Alex Straza, Ohio 03 on the Tychus, and finally Raven X on the Hanzo. So, looking at the level ones picked up, we're going to just skim them. We got there's just Memento, Swift as Wind, Betty Touch coming on out, the Wolf Heart, interesting choice there. You don't see it too often anymore. You'll usually see Ambitiousness as the pickup. Uh, we're going to get the Redemption build. I kind of like this. Uh, try and, and chunk down Infofox's 
armor and be able to like really chunk the front line because they only have a single frontliner at that point. The other picks up we're going to see Circle of Life, New Habits, and finally we're going to get the Warbreaker, which has become the meta. A nice start from Infofox actually stopping the rotation and kind of kind of where I initially said their only wave player is really the Tychus. They've already fallen behind a bit. However, on the other side you have Abre taking on Blaze, which is going to be an interesting lane here. If Captain Muramask can land a stun, he essentially wins the lane. In the meantime, uh, Fabre is going to be pushed in a little bit right now. N nothing really serious happening there. Now, finally, we have a very quick pickup because they have all that wave pressure on the side of Game Freaks. When you get the, the wave pressure, you're basically able to do as you choose. And that means go and picking up a camp. Now, the rotation from T9 Dynamics is going to go and deal with this. Uh, it'll delay them. And once again, you got Infofox sitting here, making sure he can interrupt the rotation. But he's not really going to get anything out of this. Actually, a Raven X is going to be winning that trade pretty handedly. He's building up stacks of redemption, which is not what you want to give him. And he just out DPSs you all day. Now, once again, they're in the bot lane and clearing this up, getting Merc pressure. Once again, like I said, they have better wave clear. So they can out wave clear team dynamics all day long. And I'm sure we'll see un uh, Unstoppable come out for Summer Ash on the garage. But he could pick up the actual talent. Okay, he does uh, pick that up. Ohio taking a bunch of damage. He got pulled in from the Mayev right now. This is looking like a potential kill onto the Tychus. He's stuck in there, but he will be walking on out. A nice toss up from the garage, and Infofox will actually be going down here first. So, nice kill on the side of Team Dynamics. They get the pull in the throw. Oh, sorry, the throw in into the tower range. Tychus gets really low. He just walks on out for now uh, of that silence. I'm actually surprised. Um, that Johanna got thrown in so easily. Uh, I mean, she has her D, so you just need to watch your D usage in order to like, prevent yourself from getting picked off like that. So in the top lane, uh, Captain Muramask is winning this uh, slowly but surely as Fabre is losing out well, his mana pool. Uh, in the meantime, Shrine will be started, and this will be the, the real point. If Team Dynamics can just pop that dragon and go on in. There's the pull. There's the silence. Summer Ash just walks away, pops the Indomitable. Uh, I think it wasn't called for, but it's all right. Infofox taking a lot of damage. Ohio getting a lot of value right now on that Tychus. So right now we're pretty even on the actual shrine. And they are starting to win this at this point, Team Dynamics. Their team fight is pretty strong. As I said, it comes down to once level 10, is hit i don't believe game freaks will have as much there's the dragon come out there's a silence infofox has taken a lot of damage there comes the stoppable a nice pull but they're all still in the heel and now team dynamics will have the opportunity to turn this around they're still in there mayhem is getting q after q after q as they're clomped up but they do manage to take her down first and redemption has just been completed but there's genji popping off getting himself two kills big whiz really low Fabre really low, Bernie Burn really low, and Infofox really low. Raven X is just tearing them apart now at this point with the combination of Redemption and, well, we never saw what he picked up at four, but we'll see shortly enough. Big Wiz tap and come back. Summer Ash needs to be careful. Really, Team Dynamics should have backed out from that and tapped because they had the opportunity to do so. They lose the Garage, but they win overall. They're a little behind in XP, but this is okay. They have the winning lane up top for Captain Muramask. The rest of the team will, you know, continue soaking. Uh, they are able to go and start pushing in bot lane. So they're going to start getting themselves a little bit of head there. So the fours that were picked up, we're going to see the serrated arrows and the never outmatched here coming on out. Uh, I'm not sure I'm a fan of the serrated arrows because of he doesn't have simple geometry. It's not a very heavy murking uh, map. Yes, there are a, quite a bit of camps, but there's no boss. And to me, like, Serrated Arrows is better on a boss map. And Stormbow is better on this sort of map. He also has a Never Outmatch, so he can pop those off more frequently. We've got In the Rhythm, Quarterback, Surge of Vitality, the Burning Flourish, Piece of Petroleum, a Grilling Kill. 
And then finally, Oppre Oppressor is going to come out here, which is interesting choice. Um, the majority of their damage is actually ability damage, so it sort of makes sense. And they are now getting collapsed on, however. Tychus is in a world of hurt right now as he gets pulled in, walks through the silence uh, beforehand, and an easy pickoff on the side of Game Freaks. So they're going to hit level 10 at this rate a little before Raven X in a good position now. Um, just poking away once again at Infofox. Um, he's taken a lot of free poke from Raven X. Something that you don't want to do as a tank is not really take the free damage. Now, Raven is missing a ton of his serrated, serrated arrows. Or, and so it's not really going to do too much. Sorry, scatter arrows. Uh, don't know why I said serrated arrows. On the other side, we had the Blade Dance pickup, the Loon's Grace, or Loon's Wrath. Strike at the heart. Perfect defense coming on up. Uh, one good spread. A long pitch. So we may not actually see the full silence build because he didn't pick up the level one silence either. Mayag, though, just like walking on up. There comes the warning cage as they hit 10, and now he's trapped in on in there, Tychus. Say goodnight. And uh, that's how Tychus lost his cigar, if, you, if you're ever wondering. Summer Ash uh, is in an interesting position. He tries to throw Infofox there over into the base. Raven X taking a lot of damage there as Big Wiz goes on in with a beautifully secures another kill. Darabo is now trying to escape, but down he goes. He tries to pop the dragon. Uh, that's actually a really bad call. If he did pop the dragon, it would have been terrible because you don't want to waste your dragon for uh, essentially nonsense. Um, in reality, it's better to take the death. Like the cooldown is 10 times higher than your death. And so now they have dragon available to find on the shrine. You don't want to just give up your dragon. That's probably one of the most common mistakes players make in general is that they'll pop a heroic and they'll be back up in, you know, 15, 20 seconds. And all of a sudden they don't have their heroics available to go and fight. So Game Freaks are now picking up this camp they're going to have the pressure on there and unfortunately there's no camp available for team dynamics here and they're they're going to lose a lot of that top lane in the meantime so the other choices we missed where conviction has come up uh the blessed momentum we got the blessed shield go for the throat massive shove and dragon blade and warren's cage this is where dragon needs to be popped up popped up uh, there's the taunt there's a blow up onto tychus and say good night to team dynamics uh, that was not a, a very dynamic fight, pretty static there. And Game Freaks have themselves a very easy objective now. So, why was this, uh, why did this go so poorly? Tychus was super far forward. It, you do not want to be in a position like that. You want to be in a position where you're behind your tank. And additionally, he then gets takes a bunch of damage, gets into the silence, and can't even use his running gun to get the extra distance. Then on, di on top of this, Game Freaks has gotten all his value in the top lane. In the meantime, uh, Punisher has yet to jump. There it goes. There's a Warden Cage coming out for Mayag. This is some nice Mambo comboing here. And say goodnight to Raven X as this is a third kill about to come on out big whiz going in for even more infofox collapsing on into ohio he won't have the support from the rest of gang and freaks but that with some nice man moding from uh mayog and then the follow-up with the dragon blade e combo and really did a number on team dynamics and the other problem is they just lost the blaze uh, before that the, their other problem was that well they were fighting 5v4, essentially. Team Dynamics is now potentially going to lose a keep. And then two-man stun from the Punisher, the alley-oop, and John Cena is having his way. There is one more chain death down, and Game Freaks is going to walk on out. Game Freaks um, have essentially clutched the game already. I hate to say GG in any game, and I always play to the very end, but this is a very much a, a GG scenario. The reason for that, there's a keep down. They're not even 13 yet. Team Dynamics is going to be not just one, they're going to be two talents down at this rate. And that means Game Freaks just does whatever they want. And if Game Freaks doesn't do whatever they want, uh, well, 
I'm going to I'm going to be mad because they should take advantage of this. Okay, it actually looks like uh Nev did not pick up a 13 during that entire duration. Uh interesting. So, there you go. Uh 13 talent has been picked up for Mayav. Now, Game Freaks is dealing with this and this is the opportunity for Team Dynamics to come back in. They should be collapsing 100% in fighting this. They see two people in the top lane. They cannot just go and clear the wave. They need to go and look for a fight. And Ohio was in a very risky position that may have caught, got him caught, in, caught out. But they now have the vision. They now can go in. There's the combo on to Darabo. There is the Cleansing Flame and being able to get out. This is exactly what I was talking about. The Cleansing Flame able to escape. And now they're getting damaged and healed simultaneously. But it will not be enough. The deficit between 16 and 13 is not, not able to be overcome by Team Dynamics. As three members, now a fourth has gone down. Captain Muramask will be joining them very shortly. And I hate to say it. But Game Freaks is now marching on to this core for a very quick game. We're talking under 12 minutes and 30 seconds at this point. Uh, not exactly what you want to see. They have enough damage, I think, to take this core for free. They're at 60%, 50%. Are they going to back out? No, they still have Grayman on here. They can still go in. Infofox took a bunch of damage. Bernie Bren, though, is looking worse for the wear. There's a nice shove, but... Game Freaks had it in the bag. That 16 to 12, eventually 16 to 13 deficit was just too much for them to overcome. Hopefully, Team Dynamics can flip this game around because this was this was a pretty brutal game. Uh, we're talking Big Wiz dumping out that damage, 28K, Fabre 25K, and Mayav 22K. Uh, their three DPS setup without that that extra front line didn't even matter. They just had a field day. And if you look at the healing output, he out healed by twice as much Bernie Burn. And they basically had twice as much DPS with the extra body there. So very nice job from Game Freaks. Stick around for game number two and uh, hope you've been enjoying the cast so far.